So like I've said before, taking the PICT is really important because you get practice for the SAT and you get personalized reports. But what happens if you do really, really well? Let's take a look at the different levels of recognitions and what you can earn and win if you do great on the PSAT. Of the 1.5 million students that are entered in the National Merit Scholarship Program every year, 50,000 of them are actually officially recognized. Well, what does that mean? What the National Merit Scholarship Program does is they take the 50,000 highest scores and they give them recognition. Now, do they just get a letter in the mail and say, congratulations, you're recognized? Well, sort of. They get that in addition to the fact that the National Merit Scholarship Program actually officially commends and recommends these students to two colleges of their choice. Say, for example, that you're interested in applying to UC Berkeley and Harvard, and you're a recommended student. What the National Merit Scholarship Program will actually do is they'll send letters of recommendation to those colleges that will hopefully give you a leg up on the admissions. Now what happens if you do really, really well? Of the 50,000, approximately two-thirds advance onto the next level, which is commended students. The top 36,000 are really just taken by the score. They don't take into account any of your GPA or your extracurricular activities. It's based solely on score. But in order to be a little bit fair, what the National Merit Scholarship Program does is they take an index that's compiled from previous year's data and they apply it nationwide to all 50 states. So that way they're guaranteed to get a balance from state to state. So what happens if you do really, really well? Well, you advance onto the next level, which this is semi-finalist round. Approximately one-third of the original 50,000 recognized students advance onto this round. Again, it's based solely on score. If you do really, 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 really well, you move on to the finalist. Now, as you can see, there's only a difference of 15,000 to 16,000. Where do those 1,000 students go? It's not like the top 15,000 scores versus the top 16,000 scores. Remember, I said that you had to actually qualify, which meant you had to be a full-time student or that you had to be a student going into your junior year. Some of those students that were recognized initially in the 16,000 might not necessarily meet the program requirements, which is why this level drops from 16,000 to 15,000. Remember, we got from 1.5 million students to 15,000 students by just taking a look at the scores. What the National Merit Scholarship Program does now is they actually take all those other things into account, like your GPA, your extracurricular activities. And from there, they award 8,200 National Merit Scholarship Cor Corporation awards. There are three types of awards. The first is a financial scholarship of $2,500 to the college of your choice, and approximately 250 students earn that. The other two-thirds of the awards are sponsored by either corporations or by colleges. Those awards can range anywhere from $500 to, I don't know, $10,000. And it just depends on whether you're eligible, you know, whether your family works for a corporation or the college that you're applying to, what kind of money they have set aside for this program. The fact of the matter is, is that it's really important to research it and to look and see if you do get to this level, what types of corporations and what sorts of colleges you can actually earn financial incentives through. Now, I know this is a lot of information, and there are a couple of resources to help you out. Like I said, www.nationalmerit.org is a great resource. Another great resource is your college counselor. Not only do they work really closely with the National Merit Scholarship Program, they've also coached hundreds of students on this process and can probably answer most of the questions that you have. So the bottom line is that you can't lose when you take the PSAT. At the very least, you'll get valuable practice for taking the SAT. And at best, not only will you get recognition for the college of your choice, you'll also get money to help you attend.